Hey guys, it's Mike here, and in this video, we're gonna talk about Excel tables. Now, I can't talk about tables unless I talk about my friend Paul because his laziness is legendary when it comes to painting tables. It took him 10 years to paint this table with a lot of bugging from his uncle. So the great thing about Excel tables is that you can paint them or format them in about two or three seconds. And I'm gonna show you how to do that. I'm gonna show you how to add some table options that'll allow you to quickly calculate a total row and things like that. And here is my favorite part. When it comes to filtering in tables, I'm gonna show you how to use a remote, something called a slicer in Excel, so that you can quickly filter out information and do it in a visually appealing way. Oh, and I've also got a challenge at the end. We're gonna use the remote control to solve a mystery. So stick around to the end of the video for that. So unlike my buddy Paul, we can quickly highlight this range, turn it into a table and add some color to it really quickly and it won't take us 10 years to do it. So here's how we do it. This is the quickest way that I know how to turn this range into a table. We're going to select the range first and then press Control T, a little shortcut on your keyboard. Control T, it'll say, does my table have headers? And we set it up so it does. If yours didn't, you could just um, uncheck this, but I'm gonna press OK. And now we've got this nicely formatted table, but you can change the color. If you don't like the blue, that was sort of the default color when you change a range into a table, you can choose the colors and styles from this table style gallery by clicking on the drop arrow here. And then you've got a whole selection of uh, tables that you want. I think I like this one, the uh, kind of medium style here that's going on. Maybe I'll go with the blue, but just kind of change the style a little bit from the original. And you can choose any one you want from that table styles gallery. So one thing about tables is that you can add some quick formatting options. So if you see that every other row in here is shaded, I can toggle that on and off by clicking the banded rows here. If I wanted to turn that off, uh, I could choose banded columns instead where every other column instead of every other row is shaded and that kind of thing. I could do like last column, um, which would highlight the last column there. First column as well. This actually kind of works for us in this example. So I'll probably leave that option there. And then you can also toggle on and off the filter button. So that'll allow us to filter out our numbers. I'll get to that a little bit later, but let's talk about that total row. So if you quickly wanna add totals, you don't even have to bother with any formula. You just click the total row here. So as I was saying, these, this row has these invisible drop arrows and you can choose any formula to put in the cell. Let's say I wanna get the sum in this column. So I'll just get the uh, sum here, the total. And then maybe in this column, I wanna do the average. And this one, I wanna count how many entries are in that column. So you can do a number of formulas, just quick and easy with this drop arrow that they put in every cell in this row. But more realistically for this example, I'll probably just wanna get the total for this uh, grand total here and then copy it all to the left to get the totals for each month. So if I wanted to see how many players uh, scored or what was the total goals for that month for my team, um, I would just quickly go to this first one here, go to the sum, get in the sum, and then go full Beyonce, pack everything you own in the box to the left, take that autofill handle on the right corner of this box, and then drag it all the way to the left, and then release, and then you've copied the sum very quickly over to the other cell. I wanted to show you one last thing with tables and it's unique to tables versus a structured range and that is how to insert a slicer. So a slicer, if you haven't used them before, is basically like the remote control when it comes to filtering out data. For example, I could, uh, if I wanted to filter out the PO orders and I wanted to just look, I have a few repeating numbers here and I wanna look at only the 78493s. If I, I could do that here, but it, I'd have to unselect these ones and then press okay. It's just, a, it's a little bit of work, so to filter all those out, but you can do this in a more visually appealing way, or if someone was, you were collaborating with others and maybe you want to set up a friendly, uh, user-friendly way to filter out the PO numbers that match the job description here, what you could do is click inside your table, go to the table design uh, tab here, and then choose insert slicer. So we want to filter out information from the, and you could set up multiple slicers, so the slicer is basically like a remote control for that column. Uh, so we'll press OK. And then just like a table, I'm gonna make sure the size is correct and kind of make it match. I see a little table here. and I want to paint it black. Okay. So um, now if I want to select a certain PO number, I could just click here and it would filter out all of the other ones and not include that one. I could hold down the control key on my keyboard and select multiple ones too and then release the control key and that's, I've selected these two and not the other two. 
and then I could select them all again. So I've got one final challenge for you and we're gonna try to solve it using our slicer. So these four PO numbers actually represent my three closest friends and myself. Their names are John, Paul, Bill, and myself, Mike. So I'm gonna click on each one. They're gonna reveal what kind of jobs we had before we obtained our career job. If you were paying attention to last week's video, you should be able to tell me which number is me based on the uh, job descriptions that are listed. So am I 78930 with these jobs? Am I 78672 with these jobs? Am I 78532 with these jobs? Or am I 78493 with these jobs? Let me know in the comments if you can figure it out and we'll see you in the next video.